the government has, without a doubt, found the easiest way to deal with the retirement problem in this country. The fact that there are so many people claiming or are going to claim the state pension and so few people putting back into the system. And that's just to slowly phase it out. And that's easily done by raising the state pension age. And it looks likely that it's going to be going up into the 70s. For people like me, it'll mean... I mean, I don't retire for another... According to my state pension, it says 20, uh, 2041. But I would imagine that that is going to change an awful lot. So it means that... Let's imagine that the retirement age gets to 75 by the time I retire. And it means that you are going to have to have some form of income. The state pension, small as it is, was some money coming in. Hopefully, based on your work record and your national insurance record, and you have put enough into the system to have sorted out your, um, your state pension. And now a lot of people haven't contributed to the system. Very often it's stay-at-home parents who've been looking after the children. You might be a carer. There are all sorts of things that will stop you from contributing to the state pension. Um, I have been self-employed for quite a long time. I have been paying my national insurance as a self-employed person, but I haven't been paying tax for, um, I think about 12 years now. I haven't earned enough to pay any tax. So I need to get back into that system where I do pay tax. I want to anyway, and it's even more imperative now because let's say the state pension goes up to 75. But let's say I don't want to still be working when I'm 75. The only way I'm going to be able to fund that is through a private pension. Now, at the moment, although I have only just opened a private pension, so I am like 30 years behind people who have got their act together, which means I'm not going to have much of a private pension. What I was planning to do was, if the, uh, I don't know, whatever, whatever the retirement age was going to be, let's say I thought it was going to be 69, I've put into my private pension documents that I want to start drawing that money at 70 because I thought well before 70 I can probably still keep working anyway and I probably will and there's a very good chance that I would have kept working after 70 anyway because unless something happens to my health I'm not the kind of person who's just going to sit around and do nothing I like to be busy I like to be you know the kind of side hustles that I do now I could do at any age so there's no reason why I should want to just stop working entirely and stop bringing in my own income. So some of that could well continue. I've got passive income, I've got things that I can do. Even if I'm not terribly mobile, there still are, still are things that I can do as an older person. And what I was thinking was that when I started drawing that private pension, instead of taking the 25%, if I just drew a nominal amount of money each month, not only will that extend the life of the private pension, because it's not a bottomless pit, it will just give me a top-up top, top up money. So I was thinking, OK, let's say I retired at 69 and I got my state pension at 69. If I can keep working some of my side hustles, that will top up the state pension. And then when I get to 70, if I have a nominal small amount coming out of the private pension... That means I've got three income sources. I've got whatever the side hustles are that I'm still doing. I've got the state pension and I've got to top up from private pension. Now, if they get rid of the state pension entirely for that age group, let's say by the time I get to retirement, my retirement age is 75 or more, all I'm going to have then is to keep working and then be topped up by my private pension. Now, because I don't pay tax, the private pension I have has a limit on it. I can only put in 3,600 a year as a non-taxpayer. That's all I'm allowed to put in. And it's the government that tops up the 20% to make it up to the, the, the 3,600. Um, 3, so I think I put in about 2,880 or something like that a year, and it tops up the 20%. So 
my main option obviously is to get into a tax bracket if i get into a tax bracket i can put more money into my private pension i'll lose money in tax but then i mean theoretically <clears throat> i'm then contributing to the tax system which gets me the state pension but if i never reach state pension am i contributing to the state to my state pension if i keep paying as i am now which through my national insurance, I will have my full quota of years because I worked for 20 years in different jobs um, on PAYE, so I was contributing then and I've been contributing as a self-employed person. So I will have my full quota of years by the time I theoretically get to what is currently the state pension age. So I've been contributing So I need to formulate that plan as, as to what then happens. If you have to take the entire state pension out of the equation, which may have given me eight, nine hundred pounds a month, that would have been a big chunk of a retirement income, topped up with side hustle type income, which um, would be accessible to me as an older person, and then with a nominal amount from a private pension, I don't know, I was thinking like a thousand pounds a month, maybe. It'll have to be way less than that, won't it? There's no chance. There's no chance. Um, that would give me the semblance of enough to live on. So now it's a case of having to focus. If I can't top up my private pension by more, because it takes me time to get back into that tax bracket, I need to focus more on investments, um, my savings, holding on to as much of my savings as possible because even the money that I have in the bank at the moment, let's say I retired at 70 and let's say I had 30,000 pounds of savings in the bank. Let's say I imagined living to 95. Let's say I imagined living to 100. Let's just round off the numbers. Let's say I was going to live to 100. If I took that 30,000 and divided it by those 30 years, that's top up income. I don't have to leave any money to anybody. I don't have any dependents. Um, but it also depends on my living situation. Now, I still have to pay rent. I still have to pay uh, for food. Uh, I may not be mobile then. I may not have a car. I might have to pay for taxis to get everywhere. Uh, it depends on where I'm living and what I'm doing. So there's all these little mitigating factors which change how much money you've got and how that will be spread around. So that's what you now need to think about. If you're in my age group, so I am going to be 50 this year. If you are in my age group and like me, you have not put into a pension for all sorts of reasons. Maybe you weren't given enough education. Maybe you weren't pushed enough to do it. Maybe you didn't earn enough to do it. There could be so many reasons why you have not put into a private pension and you've just been winging it and hoping for the best. It basically means that retirement has pretty much been abolished unless you have a private pension. This is what it is now. You must have a private pension if you want to retire. Because even if the state, pen, the state um, pension age is there, if it's 75 and you don't want to have to work until you're 75 to get that state pension, you want to retire earlier, you are going to have to self-fund all the way. So let's say you wanted to retire at 65, you've got to self-fund for at least five years. No, if you were trying at 75, it would be 10 years. You'd have to self-fund for 10 years before you got that state pension, assuming you lived that long. So there's lots of little things to think about. And, you know, theoretically, my retirement age is, is now 20 years away. But it could be 25 years away. By the time I get there, it could be 30 years away. And given the state of everything at the moment, you also don't know how well any retirement funds that you might have are going to do. You may still end up with less than you thought because of volatile markets, etc., etc. It's um, It's very difficult to plan. So it definitely needs careful thought because if you're in my age group that that pension age may actually never come you can never tell what's going on anyway food for thought that's depressing i know but um 
you need to seriously consider your options because the only thing you have to rely on in 20 years is the state pension. You're probably just going to have to keep on working, assuming you can. I need to make some calculations. What a nightmare. <laughs>